Welcome to the Beyond 20 Sharewell tutorial series on how to use the Postman collaboration platform to create and test API integrations with the Sharewell Service Management. If you are familiar with the Sharewell REST API, then you are also familiar with Swagger. Swagger includes the Sharewell REST API documentation, which also includes usage examples and details about each of the different request methods. It also will generate specific curl code for each one of your methods in the Sharewell REST API. However, Swagger that is included with the Sharewell Service Management does not include the ability to create REST API calls to other integrations, nor does it create code for other programming languages such as C Sharp, JavaScript, Perl, PHP, etc. Introducing Postman, which is a collaboration platform. It's easily accessible at postman.com and it is a free individual license. There is also pricing for team licensing where you can collaborate with other team members. But if you just would like to use it as an individual REST API testing platform to test your integration with Sharewell and other integrations like, for example, uh, Jira, then Postman is a free individual license. And then they have a desktop version and an online version. We'll be using the desktop version for this demonstration. Let's begin and we'll show you the Postman interface uh, from the desktop. And our view across the top is one of the key elements here is that we have the ability to export and save collections and then import them into other workspaces. So different workspaces here. I have the My Workspace set up. If you want to create a new workspace, just simply click on the New button and this will create whatever you want. You can create a new workspace, a new environment, a new request. There's templates and then there's also for people that are have the paid license you can create new APIs actually. You can even create a mock server if you have purchased a license with Postman. So for our demonstration we just need a single workspace so we're going to use the individual one and I've created a new collection here called the Sharewell integration demo. So let's take a look at how a collection is created and what some of the aspects are of it. So first you can either give a description or leave that blank. You do need a name that is required. You can also, if you want to use the same type of authorization for all of your request calls within your collection, you can set that here. And there are different types, uh, including uh, OAuth 2, which is a very popular one these days. If you were integrating with AWS or any other type of uh, system here, it's also just basic authentication, API key or none. Uh, for our purposes, we've just left it as none. You could set uh, some pre-request JavaScripts that are going to be used within uh, for each of your request calls. So if you put it at the collection level, it will execute prior to each request call. So we've left that blank. And uh, the same with our post-request tests, which will be run in JavaScript. If we want one to run after every request, we'll put it in the collection. Otherwise, we'll put these in at the request level. And then we're going to have some variables that we have set up. And these variables are at the collection level. And uh, variables can be either preset, as you see here, we have some preset values. Or they can be set at runtime through our tests or our pre-request scripts. So that's what our collection uh, variables look like. Then within our collection, we have uh, some requests. Uh, to create a new request, all you have to do is just add it right here. Uh, at the uh, collection level, just click on uh, Add a New Request. You can also, if it has much of the same, if it has the same headers and the same uh, URI, you might want to just add it by uh, right-clicking on a request you've already created and selecting Duplicate. So those are two ways that you can add requests within a collection. And let's take a look at our uh, Sharewell login collection here, first of all. Uh, every request is going to have a URI. And we see in our URI here for the Sharewell login, 
that the server is a collection level variable. So it's called Sharewell server and we set that in our collection. If we hover over it, it'll tell us what the current value is, what the initial value is, and what its scope is. Next up in our URI is directly from our documentation on the Sharewell API. So we have Sharewell API and then a method of token. And then that method has two query endpoints or two parameters, auth mode, and which is equal to a static value of internal and API key, which is equal to a collection value of our API key. And again, if we hover over it, we can see it here. And then if we click down here on our parameters, it'll show us that our two query parameters are right here, auth mode and API key. Authorization, uh, we could either set that here, we could set to inherit from parent, which is what we are doing. And for our headers, in this case, uh, we didn't have any new headers, so we only used the Postman generated headers. We do have one which is the content type that is specific to this token, which is going to use the XWWW form URL encoded content type. And then for our body, that is where we selected that uh, content type, which is right here. We selected the www.form or dash form dash URL encoded. And then we add in each of the parameters or the key value pairs. So our grant type, which is a static value of password, our client ID, which is that uh, Sherwell API key, our username, which is our collection variable user ID, and our password, which is our collection value of CSM PW. And then uh, we don't have a pre-request script for this, but we do have a post-request test, which is going to create a collection variable or set the collection variable of a B token. And we do that right here. So we have a variable of JSON data, which is parsing the response body. Then we're going to set the collection variable called a B token and capitalization is enforced. And we're going to set that with the property from our JSON data, which is called access token. And then right here, we're just logging it for troubleshooting purposes and for this variable. So let's go ahead and we'll save that. Once we save it, we can then send it. And when we send it, we can see our test results right here, or our header. We can go down here into our console. And that will show us that we did get back our bearer token. Now, the next piece that I said I'd tell you about is how Postman allows you to generate code. So if we were going to Swagger, Swagger would give us back the curl code for this request. But in Postman, we can select from many different languages, starting from C all the way to uh, Swift. And in between, we have Ruby, Python, PHP, uh, Node.js, JavaScript, Java, multiple versions of JavaScript, including with jQuery, with Fetch. Uh, Node.js has a request, a Unirest, and a native. Uh, notice there's also a PowerShell REST method here. We have C Sharp, REST Sharp. We have the uh, Java Unirest and Java uh, HTTP. So all types of different code generation. And all you have to do is just copy it right out of uh, here. You can just click on the little button here and then paste it into your uh, code editor. And it'll be ready to go right there. So next, uh, you'll notice we've been talking a lot about our collection variables. So we're going to show you how those work. We've got our token there. We have another one where we want to get a business object summary. This is can, this can be useful if we're going to get a template or we're going to get the business object. We may need to know what the business object ID is. So for our business object summary, I notice that now it's a get. It still uses the share well. And it has a business object name. of. And we have to enter this in each time. Unfortunately, we don't have prompting available yet, but uh, since it's a admin level user interface, you just key that in for whatever business object name you wanted to get, whether you wanted problem request or change request or incident. Uh, for this one, we used incident. Uh, this particular one doesn't have any parameters. As you could see, there's no query parameters up above. 
Uh, we do have uh, one header here, which is authorization. And authorization is bearer plus the B token that we got back when we did our sharewell login. And then we have a test here because we need to set another uh, collection variable called bizobid. So we're going to use that later in our next request. And when we send this, it uh, returns a, a nice little JSON here. And from that JSON, we got our bizob ID, which you can see down here in the console. And why is that? Well, that's because our test right here says that our, our JSON array is the response body. Our JSON data is the first element of that array. And then our, we're going to set the bizob ID to be the JSON data dot bizob ID. And then if we were to look at this code, uh, and that's, uh, this time let's look at it in uh, JavaScript jQuery. So in JavaScript jQuery shows you exactly what you're going to get there. Copy that out. We paste that over into our JavaScript project and we'd be good to go. So this is how we create a new Postman collection that has variables at the collection level. Uh, we showed you how to run the login so that we can generate a new collection variable called btoken. And then we showed you in our second call how we're going to use that uh, btoken as a variable for our authorization method. And then we showed you in, uh, how to run our tests. And we also explained how to run the code. I hope this video has been informative for you. Please subscribe to our Beyond 20 LLC channel on YouTube to view more videos on Sharewell, ITIL, and other ITSM solutions provided by Beyond 20, or visit our website at www.beyond20.com to learn how Beyond 20 can assist your company with ITSM training and consulting, as well as Sharewell development and administration.